Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Jonas Thorsnæpsson, and I come from Reykjavik University uh, in Iceland. And uh, my idea was to uh, present to you uh, some of the uh, uh, how does this work? Uh, doesn't work. Now it's working. Okay. So it's. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, my idea was to uh, present to you uh, uh, what I, well, monitoring systems in Iceland, monitoring seismic hazard, and, and uh, discuss uh, some of the values that I feel uh, are involved in, in such uh, monitoring. Uh, this is uh, just a review of the key issues that I'm going to address. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, I'm going to introduce to you the current uh, seismic networks in Iceland and, and uh, their uh, significance for society and industry. Uh, so uh, seismic networks, they differ from traditional uh, structural health monitoring networks in the sense that they are aimed at mapping uh, geohazard and earthquake action and they have uh, usually uh, either or both a wide focus on, on national or regional level or they can have a narrower focus on specific uh, towns or sites or single structures through uh, arrays or, uh, or structural monitoring uh, setups. So uh, these networks, they, they serve a multitude of stakeholders. Unfortunately, the stakeholders uh, usually don't realize their benefits fully, and, and, and therefore it's often difficult to, to, to fund uh, the initiation and, and operation of, of uh, these types of networks. But the information they provide is, uh, in my opinion, essential to uh, be able to build a safe and resilient uh, society. Uh, so if we just uh, list up some of the key stakeholders as I see them, uh, then of course we have the general population and house owners which uh, depend on uh, uh, the safety and resilience of their buildings and infrastructure and also uh, on uh, uh, disaster preparedness which uh, relies on information about uh, where the uh, weak spots are, where the hazard is uh, most critical and, and how it is distributed uh, throughout uh, a country or, or a region. Uh, the municipalities, in the same way, they use uh, the information for uh, planning decisions and uh, for uh, setting building regulations, uh, similar to the state on a slightly different level. They also have uh, planning uh, requirements and uh, building regulations and design requirements. And then uh, in the case of Iceland, uh, the state uh, operates insurance and reinsurance for uh, public and private uh, real estates. And then of course the major industry <coughs> uh, needs this uh, information uh, both for uh, sensible site selection and design specifications and, and also for their uh, insurance and reinsurance of, of, of their assets. Uh, now if we look at uh, the case of Iceland, uh, Iceland is uh, located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on the uh, uh, Mid-Atlantic Ridge and uh, basically the Mid-Atlantic Ridge crosses uh, through Iceland and uh, the tectonics are uh, uh, sort of controlled by the uh, combination of plate and plume uh, tectonics. So we have uh, Iceland is located on a spreading zone and you see the ages of uh, in millions of uh, annums. So uh, in Iceland uh, some parts of the Iceland are uh, zero year old <coughs> and uh, but then some parts are 10 million, 20 million. 
and then uh, the age increases uh, towards Greenland and, and also, of course, towards uh, uh, Europe. Uh, but we have, uh, uh, through this uh, continuous spreading, we have, of course, uh, uh, both uh, volcanic and, and uh, earthquake activity. So we are being pulled uh, apart by the American plate and the Eurasian plate uh, by a rate of about two centimeters uh, per year. Uh, now, uh, Icelandic earthquakes uh, have been uh, recorded uh, since around uh, the 1900s. Uh, so we have uh, some sporadic uh, records. Uh, where am I going? Sorry. So we have some sporadic records from uh, 1886 to 1927, mostly recorded, uh, of course, in uh, Europe or, uh, or US. <clears throat> and then uh, since 1927, there have been more or less uh, continuous seismological observations. Uh, now we have uh, basically two set of uh, uh, networks. Uh, one is, that is, uh, seismological networks uh, based on seismometers uh, and a strong motion accelerometer network. Uh, the uh, earlier uh, part of the seismological network was uh, uh, basically built or uh, is, is composed of uh, analog, analog uh, seismographs and they were installed in the 60s and 70s. And then uh, digital seismometers were installed uh, in the 90s. Uh, and then in uh, 85, and, uh, we started installing uh, strong motion accelerometers. Uh, there had been uh, one or two instruments uh, uh, installed in 72. Two or three, but but uh, sort of systematic network was not in, initiated until 1985, and all these networks were initiated by scientists, uh, uh, by scientists at the University of uh, Iceland uh, and uh, scientists at the Meteorological Office, and uh, the initial funding came from uh, research uh, uh, funds and uh, from. Uh, uh, companies like, uh, for instance, the Strong Motion Accelerometer Network was uh, supported by the National Power Company. But, uh, so, but the initiation was not uh, really a governmental uh, initiative, although they have uh, supported the operation uh, to some extent. But uh, the, there is a, these networks uh, differ in the sense that uh, seismological, net, seismological networks are uh, are basically aimed at uh, mapping seismicity for geological purposes, and they uh, are focusing on uh, very small magnitude earthquakes and use velocity sensors for the most part, uh, monitored uh, where they are monitoring specific frequencies to get uh, the greatest sensitivity. Uh, whereas uh, strong motion networks uh, use acceleration. Uh, meters and uh, or acceleration sensors and uh, the aim is to monitor uh, strong motion uh, for uh, design of buildings and structures. Uh, we also have uh, uh, continuous GPS monitoring uh, networks and uh, both through uh, some fixed stations and then uh, there have been regular campaigns where uh, mobile stations have been placed on fixed points. Uh, and uh, this is a result of uh, two sorts of campaigns, uh, one in uh, 1994 and 2004, so that 10 years apart. <coughs> and based on these data, uh, we can sort of map the present day geodynamics of Iceland. Uh, so what we see is uh, horizontal velocities. So we have the north-south component, uh, the green one, and the red one is the east-west component. <coughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, the red one is the west component, and the blue one is the uh, not the east component, but the uh, the uh, resultant uh, component. Uh, so uh, you see that this part of Iceland is moving in this way, and this part is moving this way, and. Uh, so this is, uh, and we have the rift axis going through here in between. Uh, and therefore, of course, the seismometers uh, are distributed more or less along uh, this line. And uh, I'm not going to discuss this uh, system in much more detail, but this is uh, what comes out of uh, a seismological system. You have. Uh, mapping of epicenters of uh, small earthquakes, uh, which show uh, sort of where the uh, seismicity is the greatest. And then uh, basically we have the mid-Atlantic ridge coming here into Reykjanes Peninsula. And then we have the rift zone traveling through the volcanic zones in Iceland. And then again out to the ridge, which continues here. But in between, we have transfer zones in the south, and we have transfer zone in the north. And in these transfer zones, we have uh, uh, strike slip earthquakes, which are the, uh, the biggest earthquakes that we uh, get. And uh, if we reduce the amount of uh, events uh, by limiting uh, the size, so th these, these, this figure here shows some magnitudes of 3.5 and greater. Uh, and then we see that uh, there are not that many big earthquakes. And the biggest ones are in the south, where the red dots are, and in the north on these uh, two transfer zones. Uh, and that's why the focus of the strong motion network is uh, in the south lowland and in the uh, north. But in the north, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the faulting is mostly out in the ocean. But the, and there is uh, just a few of the faults that actually reach uh, uh, the shore. <coughs> so uh, there is a, and, and there is a different uh, uh, faulting mechanism basically here in the north and in the south. Uh, but there is about uh, 40 uh, strong motion stations uh, operating now, providing uh, ground motion. And then we have some office buildings and power stations uh, monitored uh, uh, for structural responses as well, and uh, bridges. <coughs> uh, now this uh, shows, and then, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, in two towns in Kveregerdi, uh, here. And in uh, Husavik, here in the north, we have uh, Aris, where we have uh, a dense uh, accelerometer network within uh, as, uh, a, an area of uh, two or three kilometers in each direction. And this is uh, from an earthquake uh, in June 2008. And you see that uh, the acceleration levels recorded in this town were, were quite significant, or, or about 80% of uh, G. But the fault was only uh, about two kilometers from the, from the town. Uh, and in the north, we have recently installed a second uh, array in Husavik. And, and this is actually where we expect the next earthquake uh, to occur. And, uh, the town is located here, and uh, the fault that we see, the activity here on the, the black dots and the green dots, uh, that's actually running here, just uh, slightly north of the town, these two, two major faults. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, used the data that we have uh, recorded for various purposes, uh, such as uh, strong ground motion modeling, seismic hazard assessment, uh, 
we have uh, there have been uh, evaluated vulnerability profiles for for the building population. Uh, we've used uh, the structural data for system identification. We have uh, observed very significant side effects at uh, many places, and and uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> and of course for uh, engineering education, uh, not the least. Uh, and uh, uh, this shows uh, the ground motion modeling results. Uh, and what we see that is that uh, we have uh, considerably more rapid attenuation of motion than is uh, usual uh, for other areas. And, and that is, uh, we believe, related to a young and fractured crust in Iceland. And uh, if we uh, look at this in a linear scale, then we see that if we are about 20 kilometers away from the fault, then we are quite safe. Uh, <clears throat> and we also uh, have seen that uh, the duration of uh, strong motion is, is relatively short uh, within these uh, the critical area. So we are talking about uh, usually less than uh, 10 second duration within the 20 kilometer zone. Uh, so this is uh, the hazard map that was created uh, or uh, proposed uh, in 2004. <coughs> uh, and uh, we see the South Iceland lowland here is the, uh, has the highest ground acceleration and, and then the northern coast here. And uh, uh, the biggest population is in Reykjavik, which is here. And uh, there we have an acceleration levels of uh, between uh, 10 and 20 percent, or uh, yeah, mostly less than 15, actually. Uh, <clears throat> and and uh, most of the data comes from uh, these three big earthquakes that we had. Uh, two in uh, the year 2000 in the South Iceland lowland and, uh, and then in 2008 here between Kvedagir and Selfos. Uh, and uh, in this area there is uh, about 10, 15,000 people. So uh, the density of population is much greater uh, for this earthquake here. That was, uh, yeah, the density of population affected by this earthquake was much greater than the density of population affected by these two in 2000. Uh, and uh, all these three earthquakes were of similar magnitude, 6.5, 6.4, 6.3. And, uh, and they, the first two had about 20 kilometers surface rupture. Uh, the surface rupture was not uh, well visible for the, uh, for the third one. Uh, but this is a sort of a traditional pattern uh, for seismicity in, in the South Lowland that we get a, a series of events with a relatively short uh, uh, time lapse in between. So, uh, and, and these uh, series of events occur uh, approximately every hundred years. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the uh, sort of uh, most interesting data, or the uh, most, uh, yeah, has been uh, is, uh, available through the through this uh, uh, internet site for European strong motion data that was established uh, in uh, 2002, I think, <coughs> by uh, several partners through a European project, and uh, this at least this. Uh, site is still uh, active and it contains about 3,000 uh, processed strong motion records from uh, from all Euro of Europe and uh, parts of Turkey. <coughs> uh, now in Iceland we have a uh, uh, catastrophic insurance uh, fund. It was funded in uh, 1975 after a volcanic eruption in the Westman Islands uh, and uh, it acts as an insurance company, and the purpose uh, is uh, 
to, to operate a catastrophic insurance, which should cover uh, damages from earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, avalanches, rock slides, and floods. And uh, basically, all buildings are insured according to their uh, valuation for fire. <coughs> and we pay a fee that is 0.02% of the insured uh, value each year. And, uh, and so uh, fire insurance is compulsory. Uh, more or less, uh, yeah, every property is basically insured by, by this, except uh, uh, properties or assets owned by major industry, which often choose to uh, have a separate insurance or self-insurance. Uh, <clears throat> but part of the infrastructure and lifelines is, is insured by, by the ICI. And uh, the, uh, in uh, 2014, the ICI covered assets of about uh, 60 billion uh, euro. And uh, of course, the assistance of, of a fund like this increases the resi resilience of, of the society. And uh, we have, of course, had, uh, we regularly have some. <laughs> some catastrophes in, in, in a small scale. Uh, the Westman Islands was the trigger for, this, uh, for initiating this uh, fund. And uh, that, of course, we lost a whole town of uh, 5,000 people, uh, which has been uh, resettled now, but by 4,000 people, not 5,000, but uh, still flourishing. Uh, but of course, uh, that was a big blow. It was about 13% of the gross domestic product. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, we have earthquakes uh, in the north in 76, uh, mud and ice flows, wind-driven ocean flooding, storms, avalanches, which are actually uh, the events that have uh, killed people. Uh, other events have not been really uh, People have not died in, in the other events, except uh, the volcanic eruption. There was one, one person who died there. Uh, <clears throat> but there were about 30 people who died in this uh, avalanche in 95. Uh, glacier Alpes flooding, earthquakes in 2000, volcanic eruption in Eyjafjallajökull, just so you know how to pronounce it, uh, and uh, one year later in Greensburg. But uh, basically, these uh, events are uh, smaller in, in terms of uh, gross domestic product. And even though the expense of the earthquakes uh, comes close to the expense of uh, the volcanic eruption in Western Islands, uh, because of uh, better economics, it does not affect our national uh, budget as, as strongly. Uh, but. Uh, this uh, graph shows sort of the, uh, the payment uh, that had been cast out uh, in the past uh, 10 years. And uh, then it is the, uh, because this starts in 2004, that earthquakes in 2000 are not, or just vaguely included here, uh, but it's the earthquake in 2008 that has been the most expensive uh, event. Uh, and, uh, but basically, the, the fund is supposed to be able to cover a loss of uh, 100 billion Icelandic kronos, or, or about 500 million euros. And it's uh, divided into uh, a sort of uh, own liability of, of, uh, of 10 million. And then you have uh, reinsurance. There is a 20, group of 20 reinsurance. Uh, that each uh, covers uh, 1 billion Icelandic krona. Uh, and then the fund has uh, collected money, so it has uh, some capital of its own. Now it's 17.8 uh, billion Icelandic krona. And then uh, it is possible to take a loan with a government guarantee to, to cover the rest if, if needed. But as you see, we have not really needed uh, all these funds. Uh, so far. And uh, the reinsurers have uh, not done so badly. We have been paying premiums of uh, 25 million euros for the past 10 or for 10 year period here, 2000 to 2011. 
and we only claimed uh, 23 million back. So they made a profit of uh, 2 million, roughly. And of course, uh, this, uh, there is a regular uh, re-estimation of hazard and, uh, and risk uh, when uh, the premiums are determined and the self-liability. And uh, then uh, foreign experts come to evaluate the hazard in Iceland. And uh, they make the right reports and, uh, with uh, risk scenarios and hazard scenarios. And uh, often they are uh, way off target. And uh, Icelandic experts have had to uh, fight uh, with the, uh, the, Iceland, uh, the insurance, Catast uh, Catastrophe Insurance Fund to, to correct some misunderstandings and, and uh, exaggerations. But uh, and, uh, just to, as an example, uh, not a direct example of this, but uh, as a sort of a side example that actually has influence, is that uh, in uh, 2000, uh, there was a project, uh, the SHEAR project, uh, seismic hazard harmonization in Europe, operating in uh, uh, recently. <coughs> and uh, they produced uh, a European seismic hazard model, which is uh, probably a very good model. but. Uh, then they decided to apply it to the uh, whole of Europe. And to do that, you need to simplify the, uh, the seismic uh, zonation. And uh, for Iceland, this has uh, catastrophic uh, consequences because certainly uh, the risk uh, in many areas is, is or the hazard is, is greatly exaggerated uh, for, for large parts of, of Iceland. We have here 50% of G, and now all of Reykjavik has uh, acceleration levels up to 50% of G, and, and uh, so does uh, a larger portion of, of the country. And this is basically uh, res comes from uh, oversimplification of, and, and uh, maybe to some extent, uh, misinterpretation of, of the uh, seismic zonation, uh, appropriate seismic zonation for, for Iceland. Uh, and, uh, and it's important to, uh, yeah, sorry for this. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, a comparison of two maps, one from uh, the uh, previous one that I show you based on uh, Solness et al. in 2004, which is based on Icelandic uh, data and uh, only considering the Icelandic uh, tectonics. And then uh, this is from the shear one of the shear uh, uh, projects uh, hazard figures. And then the Reykjanes Peninsula is the critical one. The South Lowland is not so critical. And then they overestimate the seismicity around the glacials, which is primarily volcanic uh, seismicity, where you don't really have uh, this type of acceleration levels and you don't have uh, very high magnitude earthquakes. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it is particularly important to uh, have correct uh, seismic hazard defined for uh, the area around Reykjavik because uh, this is supposed to show you the population density in Iceland. Uh, and uh, so that's the black dots, basically. And about uh, one, uh, two thirds of the population live in, in, the, uh, in the southwest corner of Iceland. <clears throat> and uh, if we just look at the Reykjavik area, then that's probably close to half of the population. Uh, and uh, this shows the sum of insured aggregates by region. And as you see, the, uh, the sum is 54 for uh, the Reykjavik area, whereas it is uh, 10 times less for uh, most other regions. And uh, therefore, uh, it is important to, to uh, realize that uh, in the Reykjavik Peninsula, 
we have uh, a different type of faulting than in the South Lowland. Uh, we have magnitudes of earthquake that are less than six. We have normal faulting, and we have a very narrow seismic zone with uh, shallow focus earthquakes here. And, uh, and so uh, this would be a more appropriate uh, seismic source zonation, where you basically have a line here that is, uh, has not experienced uh, any earthquakes uh, greater than uh, uh, four in, in, uh, as, we, uh, as far as we know. And the, the red dots are the uh, earthquakes of six plus, and uh, in this area we have three earthquakes of six plus for the last 300 years. Uh, the green dots are the distribution of uh, smaller magnitude earthquakes, four and five, uh, green are five, uh, the yellow are four, and those are monitored in the past uh, uh, 30, 40 years. <coughs> so, uh, so this has, uh, is, is, is of importance. And uh, it's also of, of importance when you are trying to attract uh, new business into the country. We have uh, uh, a lot to offer. We have uh, relatively cheap energy compared to uh, other places. This is uh, statistics from uh, Vern Global, which is uh, a data center company. Uh, and uh, we have uh, hydroelectric and geothermal energy, so we have a fairly low carbon footprint, footprint uh, compared to uh, many other uh, places. But uh, if we have uh, unrealistically high hazard, then of course uh, uh, new industry is, is not likely to, to be interested in, in uh, settling in Iceland. But uh, so uh, to summarize, uh, uh, based on the recordings that we have and experience that we have had with uh, strong motion monitoring in Iceland, we can say that uh, the earthquake hazard uh, can be quantified as moderate on an international scale. It's uh, fairly localized and primarily limited to the transfer zones in the south and north and their immediate vicinity. And uh, in uh, the South Iceland earthquakes in 2000 and 2008, which all showed similar characteristics, we had considerable spatial variation in ground motion, peak parameters, uh, partly because of uh, specific uh, side effects where we have uh, lava flowing over uh, uh, ocean sediments, creating a soft layer under uh, a stiff lava layer. Uh, we had high peak accelerations, which were partly also due to these uh, site conditions. We had fairly short duration of motion and, and rapid attenuation of motion, which uh, all uh, made life, which both made uh, life easier for, for the structures in the area. And even though we had considerable damage to buildings and the, their contents, and uh, perhaps especially utility systems in the ground, uh, these recent events have demonstrated that uh, buildings and installed equipment can reliably be designed to withstand these uh, expected ex actions. And uh, electrical and telephone utilities operated more or less uninterrupted during and after the earthquakes. So uh, we feel that uh, we have uh, sampled uh, valuable earthquake-induced accelerometric data and we have applied the data for various engineering purposes and uh, which will in the future have further implications for uh, the understanding of, of earthquakes in Iceland and, and structural design. Uh, and we, have, uh, we feel that strong motion recordings provide indispensable information for structural design and codification. And uh, the data and the local expertise and experience developed through data monitoring, data analysis and related studies are important for uh, the future development of infrastructure and industry through realistic assessment of the relevant geohazard and the related risk. Thank you.